to Adams Polish's weekly live video on YouTube. And thank you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, I know we missed last week. Uh, I actually, I have a old car, so my alternator went out. So I was stuck at home while somebody was fixing it. So sorry you missed last week, but we're back on track this week. And we're gonna keep doing this consistently every single week uh, through as long as I still work at Adams Polishes. So hopefully for a long time coming. But uh, today I'm actually really excited because I'm gonna talk about a product that I think gets a little overshadowed sometimes and isn't talked about a lot, but it's one of my favorite products to be honest in regards to kind of this segment of car care, which is the polishing segment. Uh, and that's the one step polish. So um, we're gonna be talking about this guy right here, the one step polish and I'm gonna give you a little bit of an explanation how this differs from the compound and the one-step polish. And then I'll kind of explain it, sort of my best understanding of it uh, and how I like to use it. Um, so I think, you know, one-step polishes in our industry are a little, there's, I think a lot of people think there's some that are better than the others, but instead of comparing and contrasting products, I'd rather just talk about the technique of how to use it and how to make it most effective. Because uh, I think if you use this the right way and understand the way this tool is meant to be used, uh, it can help you in kind of the long run of detailing and polishing and getting your car shiny and perfect. So um, we have our 2010 R8 here. Um, and this, this usually is in the showroom, but for the last couple of months, uh, the owner of this has been driving it a lot and actually he took it through a car like a drive-through car wash because it was it snow it, it ended up getting snow on it uh, while he was driving and he took it through one of those drive-through car washes he came out and then he had you know there's the crew there that's sitting there waiting and they wiped down his car right with with I mean we don't know what product it is we don't know what towels they were using and essentially what he got all over his car for the most part is surface level scratches. So I'm gonna be focusing kind of on the back deck lid here and probably this part. And what I wanna do is find some tape to tape this off. But um, the nice thing about where the condition of this paint is, is that it's very much surface level. And I think this has ceramic on it. Uh, and that's, that's kind of another point that I'm gonna talk about here in a little bit is, you know, should you ceramic coat or sorry, should you polish a ceramic coated vehicle? And the answer is yes. And I'll talk about that here down the road in this video a little bit. But when a car, I mean, this looks like it has a lot of damage. Essentially what it has is a lot of light swirl marks, but it doesn't have the deeper damage that a car that's been neglected or kind of beaten has. So oftentimes you don't need to go full out one, two step on a car, you can just do a one step to make it look great again, and then ceramic coat it and move on. So uh, so this is kind of what we're working with today. So I'm excited to talk about this and show you how effective one step polish can be. Now, one thing to remind you guys of is that this live is not about me talking, right? Granted, I am talking on camera, but this is about you guys. So if you guys have questions about our polishing system, if you have questions about washing, if you have questions about um, interior type of stuff, I am here to answer any detailing questions that you guys have. This is, this is like a help session. This is like, I wanna be here to help you guys with questions that you have. So if you're, if you're detailing, you know, if you're doing your at home DIY detailing and you're like, man, you know, I've been really interested about this one product, but I just, I don't feel comfortable pulling the trigger for this reason ask the question on, on the, in the comments here on this YouTube live. And I want to address those for you and hopefully, you know, give you the advice, give you the things that you're looking for in regards to doing detailing in your house, or if you're a professional on here as well, you know, I know we have a few professionals on here that hang out. Um, and then one other thing, uh, there are a few other things I do want to talk about is if you haven't seen them yet, we do have the Adams polishes Viper chairs. It is a, uh, partnership that we are very excited about. Uh, Viper chair just makes such a super high quality uh, shop chair. I mean, it could even be your desk chair if you want it, but um, you know, really great brand, really great company. And uh, it's just been a great experience working with them. And if you haven't seen the video they did for our launch, 
uh, over on their Instagram, you should go check it out because they killed it. Just really, really cool. So uh, just very excited about that partnership. Uh, and one, uh, one last thing I do want to give a shout out really quick is uh, a, about a month and a half ago, I was at Adam's place in Idaho. We were shooting some video and I had the chance to go to the rag company because they're there in Eagle, Idaho. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to those guys, Anthony, uh, Levi, Dane, everyone there was just so gracious and really, really nice. And uh, it was really fun being able to hang out with those guys and talk about car care and just see their whole setup. They've, they've made a huge investment in their media type of stuff and they're just really nice people. And, and I just want to give them a shout out and tell them thank you that, I don't know if they're watching or not, but just give them a thank you for having Adam and I there to hang out and talk and, and just family owned business are great people. So any questions, Chris? Do you prefer the, um, uh, our Adam's line polishers or the new Rupes polishers that we just started selling? Yeah. So, uh, the Rupes thing, yeah, I sh probably should touch on that because we started selling Rupes again. So for those of you who didn't know, uh, back in, I think 2016, uh, we carried the Rupes polishers. That was like the, f it wasn't the first polisher that Adams polishes carried. The um, Porter cable was the first one that they ever carried. Then they started carrying the Flex. Uh, and then once Rupes kind of hit the US market, we jumped on that and we had been selling Rupes polishers. And actually Rupes as a, as a company as a whole bought a company called Cyclo here in Colorado. And that's why Rupes ended up migrating their US manufacturing and everything to Colorado. So, and actually, if you go to the Rupes headquarters, if you stand in front of their building and look at it, the building just left it was Adams Polish's old warehouse. So uh, we have a lot of uh, history with Rupes. And you know, once Adams Polish has started carrying our own polishers, uh, you know, our, our, as far as the business decisions, our margins didn't really set up to, to what fit us as a business. So we stopped carrying Rupes, but we kept the relationship going uh, with them just as like, you know, we a we thousand percent respect them as a business and their polishers are great. But I think the thing that we struggled with was their polishers are, come in at a very premium price. So it's sort, of, it sort of blocked out the first time polisher buyer. It was just too much of a commitment financially. And what we aim to do, obviously, we're trying to inspire the next DIY detailer. So we brought polishers in that we felt fit the everyday person, fit the at-home guy. Uh, and we started offering our own line. And then through R&D and everything, we've expanded it to our pro-level polishers. Uh, and, and that's where we're at now. But again, as we kept this relationship going with Rupes, we said, you know what? They sell a great polisher. They sell a great system. They sell great pads and everything. We should... Why are we not selling that? You know, they're, they're in our backyard. They're a great company. So we uh, got together with them again. The margins started to line up. And so we started selling their polishers. Now, if you're asking me which one I like more than the other, I, it's hard for me to really give you an answer. I think for me, I'm not a professional that does it. Can, you know, I'm not doing two cars a day and, and pushing as hard as I can to get cars done. So. I, I'm not one to say the Adams polish is pro polisher is better than the Rupes polisher. I think they compare with each other. I think they're great polishers in their own right in different ways. I'm probably most likely going to be grabbing the Adams polishes one because I'm just more familiar with it and it's more readily at hand for me here since I work here, you know, and it's something that I've gotten comfortable with over the few years. So I'm probably grabbing an Adams polishes polisher, but it's not to say that it's any better than the other uh, Rupes stuff. And, you know, they just launched, I can't off the top of my head remember the model name, but they just uh, launched the cordless battery powered uh, four inch uh, backing plate polisher. That's like, I mean, it's like they used everything that's great about a palm sander and they incorporate it into a dual action polisher, random orbital polisher. So it's like super comfortable to use and just like a unique shape and everything. Uh, and it's very, very cool. So if polishing is something that you take extremely serious, uh, Rupes is a, is a great option. I'd say the one differentiator for me is, is this piece, the, the detachable cord with Adam's polishes. Um, because oftentimes if I am doing a job, you know, for a neighbor or a friend, or I don't have very many clients, but doing it for somebody, you know, 
oftentimes I want to be running two polishers. And if I just keep one cord here and I grab like my 15 millimeter, you know, to do like the hood and the more broad surfaces, I can have this with me and can just plug this in, right? And then I can go through, do the big broad surfaces. But then when I get into the, you know, A, B and C pillars, then I can just detach this cord, set this down, plug this in. And now I can start working on this. So for, I think workflow for me, I tend to go towards the pro line polishers. And also most polishers, I'd say that have a hard wire to it, a cord to it, where it fails is where the cord connects to the polisher. And you can either fix that on your own or you have to get a new polisher. So for us, it was a big thing where this part was failing all the time. Now what we can do is send you a new cord and you're, you're back in business. So that's part of a couple of the benefits of the Adam stuff, but nothing to knock the Rupes stuff because again, very well engineered, very well manufactured polishers and Look, for us, we just want to give our customers every option in the book, you know? So everything from one-step polishing to two-step polishing. I mean, we just, I think the way we look at it is we want to provide the customer with the best tool possible for, the, for whatever job it is, you know? So if Rupes is something that you've always wanted, we have it now, you can buy it from us. But if you're looking to get into polishing and you don't want to spend a lot of money, Maybe our nine millimeter polisher is the right one for you. It's just, you gotta do your own research and make that decision. So long-winded explanation and answer to your question, but I felt like it's necessary. So um, here's the thing. In car care, the community is small as far as people you know, providing products. And as Adams Polishes, we respect everybody because we all have the same, in, the same common goal, which is to get cars shiny. And whether that's you're using our products, you're buying towels from the rag company, you're buying polishers from Rupes, you know, I think for us, we're just honored to earn your business. And I think the way we try to earn it is by doing lives like this to answer your questions and put out how-to videos on how our products work uh, and spend a lot of time in our R&D process to try to bring you the best products possible. So it's for us, it's not like a who's better. I don't think that's really how it goes. I mean. You saw the Super Bowl, you know, those guys are congratulating each other after the game. That's how we feel. We want everybody in our space to win. If Rupes makes a better polisher than us, it pushes us to get better. So that's kind of how we, I mean, that is how we view it and we respect everybody. And that's why like, I want to give a shout out to the rag company guys. because They're awesome. And I loved hanging out with those guys. And hopefully when they come to Colorado, they can come hang out with us too. So, all right, let's talk about one step polishing. So first and foremost, I think you can see the damage in here. And also Chris, if there's more questions, just shoot them at me. But you kind of see the damage in here, but first things first, remember if your car has a soundtrack, it needs to be clayed. So let's check it. It definitely has a soundtrack. So first things first, before I jump into anything, I need to clay the surface of this car. And I had a fine grade uh, clay bar here. Uh, so I'm just going to use this. And the reason why I'm going to use the fine grade is because this is, uh, first off, this is the, the bonnet contamination on here isn't like too out of control. I don't need to do a lot of heavy lifting with this. So I, I want to use something that's less uh, abrasive, I guess, not going to mar the surface. And also the reason why I want to use fine grade is because I'm not going to be going full two step on this. So the less damage that I can introduce to the surface, because sometimes if you use like a medium grade clay, you can mar the surface and you need to polish it off. So I want to do, you know, the least amount of lifting possible with being the most effective. So that's why I'm going to use the fine grade. And if you're curious about the differences of our clay bars and things like that, two weeks ago, we did a live video on the differences of all of our clay. So if you're interested about hey, what's the difference between this and medium grade or the visco clay bar or the clay mitt? Go back, uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, you can click up top, it says videos, or there's one that says live. If you click the live, you can see that video there and it's the differences of our clay bars and it gives, I mean, I hope I did a good explanation on it. I think I did, but. So detail spray, I have it in this IK sprayer. This IK sprayer is cool because I can flip this upside down and still use it. Um, so kind of a unique 
sprayer. And then I take the clay and all I'm gonna do is just rub this on the surface. Any questions, Chris? If not, it's okay. Um, there, well, somebody asked about the different clays. Um, what is, how, uh, how aggressive of a product or polishing process do you need to remove a uh, graphene ceramic coated high spot applied to the car six months ago? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, somebody asked, you know, how aggressive of a polishing process do you need to use um, for removing a high spot of a graphene ceramic coating that was applied six months ago? Uh, you know, I guess for me, I could give you a standardized answer, but realistically what my answer would be is to take this pad, not on your machine, hold it with your hand, put a little bit of the white polish on it, maybe just like a pea sized drop, and with just the weight of your hand, go over it, and I almost 99% of the time, that's gonna fix it. Uh, so I would try that. And if it doesn't work, then maybe bump it up to compound, but I almost guarantee that the white polish with the white pad and the weight of your hand will, will fix that. Um, so that would, be, that would be the best process to do for that. And everybody give us a, one second. I'm gonna see if I can get rid of that glare. Simple lens cleaning. <laughs> Dang. Oh, by the way, if you guys. Hey, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys are into photography, best towels for your lenses are those single soft towels. I, we use those all the time. With spray a little bit, I go like this. I take the lens, say this is the lens of my uh, camera. I spray it like this and I go like that. I wipe it off with the single soft. It works every time. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm gonna remove this clay residue. Just Normally, I'll just tell you this, if I'm actually gonna be polishing the whole car or the section I would be, I would not remove this, okay? Because I took off all the bonding contamination. Actually, I don't know if you can see it, Chris, but in certain parts of it, it's like a little dirty. So I know for sure that it was like removing some stuff there. MJ you can says... see some specks here too. It's like some, it, to me, it looks like some iron fallout and then just like maybe some road grime uh mj says are the white foam pads more aggressive than the blue and orange applicators offered on the site when used by hand so oh okay yeah hand polishing with white uh more aggressive than hand polishing with one of the polishing applicators so the i would say like the white this white foam pad like this is pretty comparable to the blue hex grip applicator for hand polishing so if you're trying to be the the least aggressive with the hand polishing, the blue hex grip applicator is going to be the best one for you. <laughs> Excuse me. The orange hex grip applicator is the most aggressive. And the only difference between the two is the cell size of the foam. <laughs> Excuse me. The cell size of the foam and also the hardness of the foam. So the orange, the uh, orange hex grip applicator the foam is like very, very hard. So what that means is while you, while you use it and you push really hard, uh, it, uh, it doesn't resist, or yeah, it doesn't resist your pressure as much um, or it doesn't absorb your pressure as much. So it helps you work the, the product like into the surface a little bit better. So, um, so yeah, uh, but I guess what I was saying is if you had already polished your car and you have the polish and the white foam, you know, you could just get away with using that. You don't necessarily need the, you don't necessarily need the um, hex grip applicator. So, all right, so now when I feel this, okay, it's like very, very smooth. There's no, I, it's no soundtrack now. I can feel that I removed all the bonded contamination. And now what I can get into is polishing this, doing the one step polish. You can see that damage, uh, do you want me to try with this light, yeah. Chris? Is there any way we can no. like probably try it? But I hold it higher probably. There we go. See it? Yep. 
So there you go, light sorrel marks on this car. And listen, the light sorrel marks, I think came from going through a car wash that then, you know, some, some workers that were outside of the car, you know, like you take your car through the car wash, it gets kind of clean and then you pull out and then you have these workers that are like there to dry your car down and wipe it down. I mean, those, for all I know, those rags have been used on every car before this one, right? So this is just kind of typical of that. So uh, like I said, oftentimes you don't need to go crazy with compound and polish. You can get away with doing something a little bit more light. So, uh, and just by the way, if there's questions, Chris, just fire them off to me. You don't need to wait. Um, and I want to answer every question possible. So, all right. So we clayed, what's that? We have an off-topic one. Yeah, let's do off-topic um, question. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name. Maybe but, Eric. Uh, can you talk about how to remove water spots on glass? Can I talk about how to remove water spots on glass? Yes, I can. Uh, if the water spots cannot be removed by spraying waterless wash on and wiping it off, then you need to bump up to a little bit more aggressive. So I would say the next aggressive I would recommend is the uh, Brilliant Glaze put Brilliant Glaze on an applicator, rub it on there. The reason why Brilliant Glaze has a tiny little abrasive in there and what it can do is fix that, make it look better. So Brilliant Glaze would be your second option after waterless wash. Then I would say your third option is water spot remover. Um, but water spot remover is sort of a, I'll just be full disclosure. It's something that like people have had trouble working with because it's an acid. So. If you're using water spot remover, okay, just to be very clear, if you're using this product right here, a thousand percent make sure that you have waterless wash with you, okay? So water spot remover here, waterless wash, right, I mean, it should be hanging in your pocket. Uh, the reason why is because the waterless wash, the surfactants that have in it, will actually take the water spot remover off of the surface. Uh, whereas I think what we've been seeing is that some people have been using water spot remover and just taking like a rag and trying to wipe it off or use a wet rag that has water in it and try to wipe it off. And what it doesn't do is remove all the product and acid off of the uh, glass and then it dwells on there and then makes your glass foggy, okay? So uh, water spot remover, you have to make sure, sorry, there's a ton of uh, warehouse stuff happening, but you gotta make sure that you have waterless wash to remove water spot remover. And don't let this, once this haze is over, wipe it off immediately. Don't let it sit. The, the effectiveness of this product is not how long you let it sit for. It's, it's, you put it on, wipe it off with waterless wash as soon as it hazes over, check it. If there's no water spots and you're good, you move on. But if there's still traces of water spots, do that process again, okay? Then wipe it off immediately when it flashes and just do it again until you get to the point where it looks good. Now, what I usually do is I end up I think for me, like water spots, if you have hard water spots on your glass, I imagine there's hard water spots on other parts of your car. So generally what I do is instead of using water spot remover to just get rid of stuff like on glass, what I'll do is I'll end up compounding the glass with blue compound. And actually the best pad for that is blue foam. And if you use this on one of the polishers at like speed five, you usually can remove the water spots from it. And also you could be gonna be doing it to your paint as well. So for me, instead of trying all these different steps, if I can't get it, if I can't get the water spots off with waterless wash and then I try burying glaze, I tend to bump straight to polishing them off because it tends to be kind of the best uh, option. Another one you could try is clay. You could use the medium grade clay bar with detail spray on the glass. Sometimes that works, but I would tell you like waterless wash first, brilliant glaze second, and then water spot remover if you have it. If you don't, then bump to polishing if you have that as well. So uh, I hope that helps. And water spots is, you know, water spots is an interesting thing. Like if you wash your car, you know, this summer and it's hot out and you get water spots on your car and you catch them in like an hour, you usually can wipe them off pretty easily. You can get them off. But if it's something that's been there for a very long time, usually it's not like, it's not the, um, um, what am I trying to say? Like the, um, 
minerals that are in, that were in the water that are sitting on the surface, those are actually like eating away at your glass and eating away at your clear coat to the point where if it's in your paint, you have to polish it. If it's in your glass, if it's so deep that you can't get it out, you need to replace your glass. So uh, water spots is just, it's there's sort of a timeline at which like you got so far down the road that you're like, well, I'm just gonna have water spots. Or you do it, you, you catch them right away and, and you're good. We're actually, this spring and this summer, we're gonna be doing a video and write up about how to prevent getting water spots. How, how do, what are some necessary steps you can take to eliminate the chance of getting water spots on your car? There's a few different things that, there's some tools we have and some techniques that we do that help with that. And then aside from that, it will be like a part two. And part two will be, if you get water spots, how do you remove them? So if that was Eric who answered that question, it might be something you can look out for here in the future, but it sounds like you, you're gonna fix it now. So that's probably a good thing. Okay, uh, you can fire off questions still, but I'm gonna get into the polishing thing. So Paul, one step polish, okay? How does this differ from the compound and the white polish? Well, the compound and the white polish are designed specific to specific pads. So the compound is paired with either the microfiber pad or the blue foam pad. And as you can see, the microfiber pad has blue foam on it. So you use the blue compound with the blue pads, okay? Whether it has microfiber on it or not. And then the white polish you use with the white foam pad. Now, uh, let me see if I could do this really fast. Um, and I actually forgot to prepare this, so give me a second. But what I'm gonna try to do essentially is find something I can draw on and give you sort of a, actually, no, here you go, ready? Come check this out, Chris. I'll just wipe this off after. So when we talk about the spectrum of polishing, okay, you have, you have like from, from this gray microfiber, or this gray microfiber applicator to this gray microfiber applicator, this is, as you can see, nasty, okay? So a lot of damage going all the way to this is perfection in your paint. So this is a mirror finish, okay? And what happens is the way that compound works is compound can essentially get you this far in the polishing process, okay? So from here to here, the compound is going to remove like a ton of damage, but it can only get you so far because the abrasive is more aggressive than, it, it can't refine down to a mirror-like finish. So what you have to do is then you have to come back with polish, okay? And then polish gets you this spectrum right here. Okay, so the polish gets you from where compound stopped being effective to a perfect finish all the way over here, okay? Now the way that one step polish works is that one step polish isn't gonna remove as much damage as compound and it may not finish as perfect as polish. So it kind of splits, it kind of splits the, uh, it sort of splits the uh, spectrum here. Okay, so one step polish gets you essentially kind of like a little bit later in the process of polish, but it sort of sits right there in the middle. So oftentimes what happens is if you, if you don't need to remove as much damage, just say you have a brand new car and you clayed it and it just has surface scratches, one step polish might be the perfect thing for you uh, because you, it, it will still refine to looking like a mirror for the most part, but not like beyond that, right? Uh, whereas if you have a car that's been neglected for a long time, it has serious scratches, not just like surface level type of stuff, you gotta use compound no matter what. And the only way to figure this out, and this is what I tell people is, if you have a car and you don't know what it needs, you always start with polish because it's going to tell you instantly if there's extra damage in the surface or not, okay? This is going to give you, this is gonna allow you to figure out what it really needs. And then sometimes you do polish and you're like, oh my God, that actually came out really good, but it's not quite, it, it didn't remove the damage as much as I wanted. Oftentimes you could just bump straight to the one step and this is all that you need. 
Okay. But then sometimes you do this and you're like, oh my God, this did nothing. And I have like terrible damage in my car. Then you know you have to start with compound. So if you look at it on the spectrum, compound, compound removes more damage than one step polish and covers kind of half of the, you know, super, super damage to perfection. And then polish kind of, you know, what compound ends up doing is removing all the damage that you need, all the swirl marks, all the deep scratches, all the everything, all the water spots, all, all the stuff that compound removes. But compound leaves a little bit of haze. It's called marring, okay? It leaves like, you know what marring is. You'll know what marring is because it's in the shape of the pattern your polisher goes, okay? So it's like these little nicks in like the way that your polisher was moving. And sometimes you can see it, sometimes it just looks hazy. What polish does is it fixes that haze. It takes that all the haze from compound out and makes it completely perfect. Where one step, it has a really long open time, and I'm gonna explain that here in a second, but essentially it can you can you can do more passes with one step polish and break down the abrasive longer so you can start a, a kind of medium aggressive and finish to medium fine finish. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. Uh, can you ever go backwards? Like maybe you uh, used polish, but then you realize you need to use compound first. So can you then go back and compound and then polish again? A thousand percent. So yeah, and, and the way that you do, the way that we do this, so if you get a car and you don't know what it needs, you always do a test area first, okay? And, and what you, you pick, you, I tend to do it on the hood because I know I'm gonna polish the hood anyways. But what I do is I pick a two foot by two foot section on my hood and I polish that section, okay? And I, I do polish first. And then once I'm done doing, and I count, I count two passes. So that's side to side, up and down twice. And then I take it, I remove the polish and I look at it and I go, okay, what do I need here? Well, there, there, there's areas where like, it looks like somebody set their purse or their coffee cup on the car and it slid and it put deep scratches in the finish. Well, if they did it there, for sure they have done it on the roof and other places. So I, I, so, okay, let's move, let's move up a step. So then I move from polish and then I go to, sometimes I go to one step polish. Generally, if I see a lot of damage, I know I got to go to compound. So I'll switch to the compound with the blue foam pad. Then I try that. And if I, if I get like 80% of the way of getting the damage out, but I can still see deep scratches, I'm like, Oh, I was so close. Then I'll bump up to the compound and the microfiber pad. And then generally after you do that, you're like, all right, I got it. It, it removed all the damage that I wanted it to. Right. But the haze is there because the marring came from the aggressiveness of the abrasive inside compound. So then I hit it with the polish after, and then it's like a perfect mirror. And I go like, okay, that two foot by two foot section just told me I need to start with compound in the microfiber pad. Now I'm going to do that to all the area I'm going to polish today, right? Let's say I do, let's say I'm doing all, the whole car, right? I go and I do compound with the microfiber on, and I also check to see what speed I need to run, whether that's four or five or six. Generally I'm at like four or five on speed and I go do that to the whole car. Now I know the whole car, the damage has been removed. Okay. That the majority of the damage, but I know that the whole car is going to be hazy because compound, does that right because it's a little more aggressive then i switch to my white foam pad and my white polish on speed four or five whatever i'm doing and i go around the car now my car's perfect but you got to do the research first because what you don't want to do is polish the whole car and then you look at it and you're like what the hell i didn't get this out and i didn't get that out i should have done microfiber now you have to polish the car again it's like do this little section that you know that like the, the, the damage that you see there is like similar to everything else on the car. And then you're like, okay, if this is what it takes to perfect it, then I know that I can do that to the whole car. So how many pads do you need for a car? Can one pad do a whole car? Uh, you know, I would probably say like two pads. Ideally you want the reason why I say you, you absolutely can polish a whole car with one pad, you know, in, in having, having something like, um, a pad conditioning brush, whether you have our old one or our new one, um, having one of these is going to help you, uh, keep your pads clean while you do the whole polishing process. But yeah, one pad, you absolutely could do a whole car with one pad. The only reason I tell you to have two with you is because if you, 
if, if something happens where you drop your polisher, you drop your pad and it hits the ground, you don't want to use, you don't want to keep using that because it's going to have, you either need to clean it or you need to use a different pad. So I usually have like one or two on reserve for myself. Um, and also the other thing too is like, if you're, if you set out on a Saturday to fully polish your car, I mean, you're talking about like a six hour job, right? If you get to halfway and it's like, I forgot Miles had a birthday party. So you have to drop everything, go take your kid to a birthday party. And now you've just like completely lost track of the detailing part. When you come back on the next Sunday, your pad's going to have a bunch of dried compound and stuff in it. You need to brush it out or clean it, but you could just throw a new pad on and keep going. So my recommendation is to have at least two, two pads while you do the whole thing, whether that's on the four inch polisher, four inch backing plate polisher, like the mini or the 15, uh, or sorry, the, the five and a half inch backing plate on the on the 15 millimeter Pro. Um, just have two pads with you. And I'm pretty sure, I'd have to check again, but most of our polisher kits come with like the polisher, the compound and polish and two pads usually. So it's usually set up pretty well for that. So I hope I, I created this mess for no reason because I hope- the, uh, There were comments they liked the visual a lot. Really? Yep. <laughs> okay, good. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to make Chris clean that up. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we talked about compound and polish, one set polish and the spectrum, right? And we also talked about how compound is designed to go with the blue pad, whether it's foam or microfiber. And we also talked about how the polish is designed to go with the white foam pad. Now, the one step polish is, to, is designed to go with all of the pads, okay? So that's like one unique thing about the one step polish is that uh, you kind of determine how aggressive you need to be based on the pad, not the compounder polish. Okay. So that's one thing I do like about this product is that, you know, we have all these different pads in our line. You know, we have, like we just talked about blue, blue microfiber, blue foam, white foam, but we also have a red foam pad and we have a one step polish this is called a one-step pad but i i'll be a thousand percent honest i do not use this as only a one-step pad okay i actually use this a lot of times with compound to be extremely aggressive because this is a mixture of wool and microfiber material on the surface here and what the wool does is it uh it it holds in heat very well so when you go to polishing and have to remove a lot of damage so this one step pad actually does a really great job to be a very aggressive. And we're actually in the process of kind of all like kind of restructuring how things are named and like what we offer. So uh, you'll see that here pretty soon. Usually like in June, we do a big polishing sale and I imagine you'll see some changes in our system to make it a little bit more, make, make more sense of it. So. We'll, uh... So there are, so somebody asked essentially, you know, if you're trying to get water spots off of glass, will compound or polish work? Or do you need, I imagine they're referring to like, do you need a glass polish? Because there is that on the market. Uh, you know, I, we don't offer a glass polish. We've tested dozens of them and our compound is equally, if not more effective uh, than those. So it's just something that we've never like, been comfortable enough to be like, yeah, let's sell a glass polish. And we're like, well, it doesn't really work. So, uh, and that might be because we don't have the right system or pad. So it's nothing against something that a competitor sells. But what I would say is if, if you have our compound and you have our pads, try that first. Right. And if it doesn't work, then explore maybe a glass polish with a specific glass polishing pad. So that's what I would tell you to do is you, yeah, it's not, it's not like if you do this, it's going to ruin your glass. You know, it's just, it may not be the right, uh, you know, chemical formula or maybe the right material of pad that makes it the most effective on glass. But I'm just telling you right now, from my experience, the, the compound and, uh, the blue foam for me has worked every time in the past, even to the point where I did it to my bathroom, my, my shower doors. Like I took this exact thing right here on a, on this polisher, on the 15 millimeter pro. 
and I polished all my glass and then I, I did the ceramic glass coating on it. Um, so I know for me, it's super effective. And I'll just tell you this right now, uh, hard water, <laughs> it is, it, there aren't areas that are worse than others. You know, there are some places, I would say there are some places that are better than others, but like, you know, hard water is, is sort of like, it's the same thing no matter where you are. It's just the amount of minerals and, and things that are inside your water. Uh, and, and, you know, you would call it like a, PP, a PPM, like a parts per million. How many, or, or a TDS, which is uh, total dissolved solids. So like it's, it's how many dissolved minerals are, are floating around in the water that's coming out of your hose or your faucet, whatever. And what happens is that goes onto your car and then water naturally in nature evaporates into the air and those dissolved solids dry and stick to your surface and stay there. And that's what you see is they sit on the surface like this, right? And then what happens is uh, they start to eat away at your clear coat and that's why you end up having to polish it but like again the video we're going to talk about is if you catch them soon enough you the, the, you need to be just like you need to start the least aggressive and then work your way up to most aggressive so oftentimes like like i said if if you know when you first started cleaning your car you didn't have water spots and then you get in and you dry your whole car and you have water spots like right here it's like where's my waterless wash grab your waterless wash spray it on there wipe it off and it should come off, like if you get it within 30 minutes or an hour. But if you do that and you come back a week later and you're going to wash your car and you're like, what the heck, I have water spots? Or let's say that you drove, you're driving home one day and your car got blasted with sprinklers. Sprinklers have the, I mean, they're, it's hard water coming out of those. You either need to get home and take those off with waterless wash or washing your car, or if you leave it and you neglect it for a month, now you need to bump up to polishing and things like that. So just realize that like time is working against you when water spots are sitting on your car because they're just, they're working against your paint the whole time. So, okay, so these are all really good questions and like keep asking them because I wanna be as helpful as possible. So, uh, so getting back into one step polishing. So like I was saying before, our polishing system, two step system is designed specifically with compound and polish to go with specific pads, right? Whereas one step polish is designed to go with everything, okay? So you're customizing the aggressiveness based on which pad you're using. And I'll tell you this right now, if, if the pad you're using has fibers on it, it's going to be more aggressive because it's going to produce more heat, make your paint more vulnerable, and it's going to let the abrasive work better. So it's gonna remove more damage, but it will leave haziness after you're done, so you need to refine it. So what we want to do is figure out what we can do by using only one pad and only one polishing step, because this is a one step polish, right? So if I start with this and it doesn't remove enough damage, then I'll bump up to, well, actually I'll start with the red because this is the least aggressive foam that we have, okay? And this is designed for applying wax and sealant. So it has to be the least aggressive because you don't want to apply wax and then be scratching your car at the same time, okay? So red is the least aggressive. So I'll start with this, see what this does. Then we move to the white foam. If this, if this doesn't get, get us where we want, and then if, if the white foam doesn't get us where we want, then you go up to the blue foam, then you go up to the blue microfiber pad. And then if, again, if this still doesn't get there, then you bump up to the one-step polishing pad. And I mean, I think for me, like if I get past I generally, when I'm using this product, don't ever get past the foam pads, okay? Because for the most part, any sort of fiber is gonna leave a haze on your car. So usually what I do is if I get past the blue foam, if I'm like, it didn't do it, then I tend to just go into compound and polish. So, and again, it's more about like doing, doing an area to, to see what it's gonna take before you move on to the whole car. You wanna do a little bit of research before you do a big project, right? So. Um, let me see if I can find, I think I have some over here, but I kind of wanted to take this off so you guys can get a little bit better of a before and after, just like a very distinct line. Uh, and if you don't have it and you're polishing a lot, the Adams Polishes tape is, we searched high and low to find this tape because it's like, it's sort of like painter's tape, but uh, the one thing this definitely 
is very good at is is it doesn't leave any of the adhesive behind uh, when you put this onto your car. So, you know, oftentimes you can use tape and if you put it on the plastic area, it will like leave adhesive behind and then you have to remove that later. So you're like working against yourself versus this type of tape. The other thing that's really great about this tape is that it stays very flush to the surface. So when you're polishing, it doesn't tend to peel the tape off. Okay, so uh, another thing I like to do just for good measure is I fold the tape over on the side like I'm gonna pull it off. So like, even if you push this down, you still have like a tab to grab and pull, okay? So. That tape on there, like so. And now we'll get into, actually probably what I'll do is, just for good measure, we'll put it on this side as well. Oh, another thing, I have to promote this because Chris and I uh, created this, but if you if you're on YouTube here, um, go to our go to the Adams Polishes YouTube channel and check out the uh, behind the scenes Barrett Jackson video. Um, it's something you know Adams Polishes has been a part of Barrett Jackson for a few years, and we really wanted to show kind of how we're involved with Barrett Jackson, and I'm super proud of how the video came out. Chris and I put a lot of hard work into it as far as getting up early, hanging out with the team, working, uh, capturing as much stuff as possible. And so, I don't know, you ask Chris, but I think it came together really well and tells the story really good. So after this, if you have some time or this evening, go and check that video out because it also highlights some team members that are a little bit more behind the scenes working the events. And I think, you know, I just, I want them to know how thankful I am of them because they put so much effort and so much hard work into those shows. And it just, sometimes it can feel thankless, but I want them to know that we're all very thankful of the hard work they put in. So, you know, if you have a chance, go watch that video, like it, put comments on there. Hey, Eric, Dan, all the detailers are there. You guys are amazing. Like I would just, I would love the support for that. So anyway, so let's start with polishing. And like I said, we're gonna start with the red wax and sealant foam pad, okay? So get this centered on our polisher as good as possible. Not very centered, but it's okay. And we're gonna use the one-step polish. So I like to uh, shake this the best I can. And also, I'm also trying to make sure that I have, you know, a nice clean towel. So th this is a towel that's been ran through the wash and it's good to go, ready to go. So one step polish and I'm working, I'm gonna be doing kind of this area here. Uh, and also that's another thing to think about like as you're working. So like if I did just this panel here of the kind of back deck lid here, I would use less polish because I don't need a ton because I'm not working in a big area. But when I'm working more in a bigger area, I'll probably, you, you put a little bit more on there. So one step polish. The other thing I would tell you guys, there's a, so before Adams Polish has developed a two-step polishing system with just compound and polish, we had a three-step polishing system and it was heavy correcting compound, correcting polish, which was orange, and then finishing polish. And what we did is we took correcting polish away and then we developed a two-step system. Uh, and I can't tell you how many times people go like, what happened to the correcting polish? I love that stuff. That's like one of my favorite things. This one step polish is probably the closest thing we have to the correcting polish. It's just like a similar kind of, like I was talking about like the spectrum, you know, the correcting polish sort of, it, the heavy correcting only got so far, then you had to use correcting polish, then the finishing polish. And this is sort of like the same concept of the correcting polish, but designed to work on its own. So, um, so, just if, if you're here and you know about the correcting polish, and you're like, I wish I had that, I would explore this because it's very, very similar to that. And that's honestly why I like this product so much because it does uh, remind me of that. It's a very similar formula. If not, I think it's even a little bit better because it has a longer open time. While you do that, or while you start polishing that, can you remove polish, polish or wax from vinyl stripping? Yeah, so can you remove polish or wax from, from vinyl striping? thousand percent, yes. And the product you need for that, I don't have over here right now, but it's tire and rubber cleaner. So uh, you can see it on our website, but search, go to adamspolishes.com, search bar, 
tire and rubber cleaner or tire ampersand rubber cleaner. Uh, and if you search that and get that 16 ounce bottle, you just spray it into, you want to spray it into an edgeless utility towel, which is like our scrubbing. You search that too, edgeless utility towel. Spray it into that and just lightly scrub it and it will remove that instantly. Like it's super quick. So I think we have a video on our YouTube as well about the different uses of tire and rubber cleaner and that's on it. That piece of it's on there. So uh, if you're interested, you can go check that out. Okay, so we're gonna polish. I'm gonna run this at speed four. Okay, and we're gonna see if this red pad, where we can get the finish on this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this for three passes. So kind of spreading the polish out right now. So three passes is I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go nice and slow. So right now I'm kind of going in regards to the car, front to back. So from the back of the car to the front of the car, and now I will go side to side. So I run it from passenger side to driver's side. And actually I'm only gonna do two passes just to see where it gets it. So that was one pass, now I'm on my second pass, going front to back. and side to side. Now, what I want you guys to notice right now <laughs> is that this one step polish is not drying out and creating a ton of dust. Okay, you can see it's still, it looks like Vaseline. Now, what I'm seeing, I'm sure Chris can show you this, but it looks sort of milky still, yeah. okay? The milkiness of that pro, of, of what, the way it looks on the surface here, means that the abrasive is still there, okay? When you break it down to the point where it almost looks clear, means that you've worked through the one-step polish all the way. And that's essentially like where you wanna take it. So sometimes you need to work the one-step polisher longer than maybe you're working compound or regular polish. And, the, and again, the reason for that is because you wanna work through the abrasive as much as possible. And remember, like we sh I showed you over here, that spectrum, you kind of need to work it longer. That's why I tend to tell people do, f like I just did two passes, do four passes because it allows you to break down the abrasive. Now, when I say break down the abrasive, I mean the abrasive, it, it will look more jagged than this, but the abrasive looks like this, like on a microscopic level, okay? It looks like, it looks like an asteroid, like a very jagged rock, okay? And as you polish this and this bangs around the surface and in the pad, little pieces of it start to break off like this, right? So what it's doing is as you're polishing with it and these little pieces start to break off, now you're getting even more micro abrasives that are breaking off, but this abrasive is breaking down and getting smaller. So when you do that, when you break it down and make the abrasive smaller, it refines the finish better. That's how you get the mirror finish. And essentially, that's what we're doing in this whole, that's like the basic concept of this whole thing. The only thing that's different about compound is the abrasive's bigger and it doesn't break down as far. So then you have to take the polish where then it starts where compound is broken down to that point. Now polish starts there and breaks down even more. Once that polish just starts a little bit less, a little bit less big as say compound and doesn't break down as refined as, right? So. When I say break down the polish, that's what I'm referring to, <coughs> is giving it time to get the pieces to break off and refine to like a perfect finish. So, so let's check this really quick. I'm gonna wipe this off and let's see if we, we almost got there. I mean, kind of. Can you see any damage in there, Chris? I definitely can yeah, see. Definitely. You can? Yeah. So hold this up here. Like this way. So you should be able to see like there's still some surface level scratches in there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So what that tells me is our pad that we use with the one set polish was not aggressive enough. Right? And, and you know what the funny thing is, is like 
I'll just show you why I can, I can tell you why it's not aggressive enough. Okay. Because look at this. Okay. Come check this out. Come look at the pad, Chris. When I push this down, see how this, this like folds really easy. So I, if I, if I'm running this machine and I push down, see how the pad keeps spinning. This is like with the pressure of my hand. What's happening is this foam because it's softer, it's absorbing my pressure. So the pad is like absorbing it. And also the way that this cell structure is, the polish is getting, is going deeper into the sponge or the foam of this, okay? Now the harder, the harder the foam surface, the more it keeps the polish on the surface of the pad, on the face of the pad, but also it doesn't, it doesn't absorb, like see this? This blue foam is not, is not, this way. this way? Here, I can do it like more on this side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm doing the same amount of pressure on both. Okay, so this is absorbing more of my pressure versus this is not absorbing like barely, I mean, it's really not doing barely anything, right? So it's the stiffness. Of the Think of this as like hard memory foam on a mattress and this is like the super soft bed that hurts everyone's backs, <laughs> right? It's a sleep number <coughs> zero and a sleep number 100. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, okay, like I said, we start with the least aggressive pad possible, red foam, okay? Didn't get us to where we wanted, so now we bump up to the next least aggressive, which is going to be the white foam. So we put this on, and you know what we do? The same exact thing, okay? So same amount of, pol same amount of polish, uh, I'll do the same amount of passes, and we'll just see like where we get to. And listen, I, I know that I've already done a little bit of work on this, okay? So I've already started to make it look better, but what I'm trying to do, I don't care what the very top part of the car, of, of the paint looks like. I'm trying to get to the bottom of the canyon of these surface scratches. So the fact that I can even see any sort of damage in it means that I need to get a little bit more aggressive. So that's what I'm doing by bumping up to the next, uh, to the next level of pad essentially. So now I'm into white foam. So same thing. Speed four, spread this out, and we go. While I polish, think of questions so Chris can ask me. So yeah, this is, <coughs> excuse me. This is definitely not absorbing as much of my pressure, but the thing about the white foam is that as the foam starts to heat up, it starts to get softer. So it starts to absorb more of that pressure. So let's see where we can get with this white foam on two passes again. Why speed four and not a higher speed? I think speed four is kind of the sweet spot on these polishers. Uh, I would say that if you're using one of our um, like standard swirl killers, like the black colored machines, those are our first gen polishers. Running at a speed five would be better. They just don't have the, those older machines don't have the torque and speed that these professional grade polishers have, but uh, I think the reason why I say that is because um, it's like a good place to start is at four. Because look, if you if you go at six and you run it, you can't go any higher than six, right? If I start at four, if I need to be less aggressive, I can bump it down to speed three or I could bump it up to speed five. It like gives me room, it gives me wiggle room to either go up or down in speed. So that's why I usually always start at four. And I'd say like, 95% of the time when I'm polishing, I'm running it on speed four. It's only in the case of like extremely hard clear coat or extreme damage that I'm bumping it all the way to six. So, uh, and listen, the faster your machine's running, the more chance it has to generate heat and the harder your machine works. So you have a lot of like, you have these vents that are blowing air out of it. The faster you run it, the more hot it gets and you just can't run your machine for long. It's like. Think about it in this sense, like it's like driving your car. Are you redlining your car all the time? Or are you like, when you're driving it aggressively, you're kind of like in the middle 
being able to go up and down. That's kind of how I think about it is I don't want to be max. I don't want to put as much stress on the machine as I can. I want to give myself room to go up or down, but also keep the machine working efficiently and, and good. So I hope that's a good explanation. All right, I'm going to wipe this off. Oh man, God, it's even a little bit closer. The interesting thing is it's sort of, it's sort of like starting to kind of round off the, uh, the uh, damage a little bit. Oh, sweet. Okay, so Chris, you can see that. So you can see like a lot of just like the basic swirl marks are now starting to uh, be removed, but it's more of like the deeper scratches that, and it, uh, I guess like in my mind, it's sort of like, the deeper scratches are the probably the dirt and grime that were in the towels of those detailers wiping the car down, right? So we remove the surface level swirl marks that were caused by probably, you know, non-premium microfiber towels. Now we're chasing, removing the damage from the dirt and nastiness and grime that was in the towel that was just being rubbed into the surface. So that's why we just bump up to the next aggressive level. So that's gonna be blue foam okay so now we go up to blue foam and we do the same thing listen i'll just tell you guys this polishing doing good polishing is like playing good at golf it's boring you do the same thing you just change your variable which is like the club you're using right but you do it the same way every time you want to hit your golf shots the same way you want to polish with your pads and everything the same way, you're just, you're changing the aggressiveness by changing the variable, which is just, in this case, the pad, right? So I'm gonna spray a little bit of detail spray in this to keep it a little bit hydrated. And just added that higher speed can also wear out the pads faster. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'll be honest, like, like the, the heat displacement from inside the machine comes out of this vent here and this vent here but it also comes out of these vents and like through this head and a lot of times it will i mean i've i've done it i've ran it so hard for so long that it starts melting the adhesive of where this foam meets this hook and loop backing right here like you can see it on here right and like i'll be polishing and then all of a sudden my foot this foam piece goes and it shoots across the, the garage. And now I just have like the hook and loop sitting. I'm like, what the heck just happened? And then you feel your pad and you're like, holy crap. Like the face of the pad wasn't hot, but the backing plate was hot because the heat was like just pouring out of the machine through the, through the thing. So, okay. Now we get into blue foam. And now the thing with the blue foam like I can, I can put a little bit of more pressure onto this, maybe like two, two to three pounds of pressure because the pad itself is not gonna absorb as much of that pressure. So now I'm, I'm just monitoring essentially like how fast my pad is spinning right now. So I can let it, if, I don't know if you can see this Chris, but like if I put no pressure on it, this, the, the pad spins really, really fast. Versus if I put a little bit of pressure, it slows it down a little bit. So that's all I'm doing, I'm monitoring. You can also hear the machine, listen. You wanna hear that a little bit. You wanna hear the machine having to work just a little bit. So remember, I'm doing two passes again.
We're getting closer, huh? What do you think? Definitely. Definitely looking better. There's still just a little bit left. So listen, I'm not satisfied. So I'm gonna go to the next. Now I'm gonna go microfiber. Just to see, normally, like I said, like normally what I would do is by the time I've done this, I would just end up moving to this. But for the sake of one step polishing in this video, we are going to do the microfiber pad. Cause I actually have done this actually had, I don't know if you guys have seen, uh, Toyota has like on their Forerunners and Tacomas, they have like a royal blue color. It's like a flat royal blue. Um, I don't know the technical name for it, but um, I had one of those come in here as a Forerunner. I think it was a 2018 uh, TRD Pro. And I used the microfiber pad with the one step polish and it made it perfect. Like it was amazing. I was like, dude, no way. It never works out. but. In that case, it did. So that might it might work out on this too. So same thing. I'm just bumping up the aggressiveness to the pad. And now we're gonna see where it gets us. a good question I'll, I'll even show i'll show that here in a second but essentially somebody asked when you're applying wax with a machine how much pressure do you use and like what speed do you run it out so the amount of pressure you use is zero pretty much it's like the weight of the machine and the speed you use is either one or two i do it on speed one so when you apply a wax and and or sealant uh it's not about you're not correcting, so you don't need to generate any heat. It's just, it's more about like getting the, getting the, um, getting the wax like onto the surface. It's an application method. And so that's why you don't necessarily, you don't need any speed or any of that stuff. Uh, what I need to do is I just, I could see as I was polishing, this started to mat down a little bit. If you can see that pad, like this is matted down. So all this is doing is just gliding on the surface. Show it from the side, yeah. So watch this. If I, if I just brush, I'll show you. I'll brush this kind of the this side over here, and you see, see how those yeah. stand up now. So I want these fibers to be standing up as much as possible. So as you see, like your your pad starts to just be gliding a little bit, and not doesn't. It seems like the the fibers are started to mat down. Pull it off. Brush it with your pad conditioning brush and then go back to polishing. I know I'm like kind of, I'm sort of like one and a half passes into this thing. Let's spread this out. Oh, and the other thing is, I don't know if you can see this in here, but there's still one step polish inside of this pad. Yeah. You see the purple in it? Yeah. So instead of adding more polish, which is only gonna gum up my pad, you just spray some detail spray in it to rehydrate the solids. And as you can see, put it back on and it's there, okay? So it just puts the polish back on there and I keep going.
Okay, now we check it. Actually, I'm gonna brush this again. Look, you can see the color of the polish is starting to go away. That means I'm like working through it quite a bit. So brush this again. So I probably like in this instance, I probably, as I move on, I'd add more polish to this because I'm starting to, you can see it's starting to get more thin on the surface and also on the pad, the color is not showing through as much. So uh, take our thing, wipe this off. Oh, geez. It's crazy, like, there's a couple really deep scratches right here. But as far as the rest of it, it's like, I mean, it looks amazing. How's that look, Chris? Not see anything now? Yeah, I can't see anything <laughs> in camera. All right. Well, there you go. If Chris can't see it, I think we're good. So here, ready? So start here, is this where you can see it? Yep. And then I'm gonna remove, if you can see this, I'm gonna remove this tape. So ready? Mm -hmm. Remove this tape. Can you see the damage on that side? Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. So yeah, I mean, geez. So, I mean, for sure, like I know that, <clears throat> for sure I know that I need to do the microfiber pad uh, with the one step polish on the whole car. And I mean, looking at this, it is like, the clarity is amazing. It, it's not hazy at all, which, which if I was using compound, it would be hazy. I'd for sure have to go over it with the polish. So I am like thrilled with that. That is, and another thing too, I would say like, managing your expectation is also a great thing to consider like especially like if it's like a day a daily driver for me one step polish is more than good enough and and here's another great point if your car is graphene ceramic coated you know here's the thing graphene ceramic coating is not bulletproof and can get scratches this car is ceramic coated okay so you can see it got surface level scratches and one step polish is more than enough to correct that, okay? So I'll just be honest, my personal routine for car care is I one step polish my car twice a year. I do it, I do it once in the late spring when the weather is decent and I do it once in the fall, either in October or early November. And I one step polish my whole car and I apply the graphene ceramic spray coating, this product right here. Okay, and this product is a two year graphene ceramic coating. Okay, this is the same thing that goes into the little 60 ml bottle. It's just, <clears throat> has less of the active ingredients. So this being rated at two years <clears throat> is more than enough than what I need because here's the thing, like, are you really not gonna touch your car after a year? You're really not gonna be touching your car after six months. And when I say touching, I mean polishing, right? Like I want my car to look shiny and awesome throughout the whole year. And one of the easiest ways to do that is <clears throat> one step polishing your ceramic coated vehicle because it absolutely removes the damage. And the thing about this, the graphene ceramic coating is that <clears throat> it's, it's a much harder surface than clear coat. So when you do get those scratches, they're not as deep. So you don't have to be as aggressive when it comes to polishing them off and making your car look amazing again. So the combo between your car being protected with one, or sorry, with graphene ceramic coating, whether it's a spray or not, and being able to polish it with the one step polish, that combo to me is just, it is so awesome and I love it because listen, the graphene ceramic coating and the spray coating makes cleaning your car easier. So you don't have to touch your, you don't have to be as aggressive when you're washing your car, right? You don't have to scrub as much, things like that. Also, there's less water on your car when you go to dry it. So you don't have to touch your car as much when you're drying it. Oftentimes you could just use a uh, air cannon to dry it. You don't even have to touch it, right? So if you don't touch your car, you're not scratching it. If you do touch it, there's always a chance that you can scratch it. So not only is the graphene ceramic coating making it, making your life easier in your daily kind of everyday detailing process with washing and things like that, but also it's not introducing as much damage throughout the year. So when you get to that kind of six month mark, one step polish, make it look perfect again, reapply the spray coating. It's very easy. And then 
you start the process over again. And then the next six months, you do it. it. I mean, it's so ridiculously easy and so enjoyable. I just, I love it. <laughs> Any more questions? We can wrap it up here. So, well, <clears throat> thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope this explanation of One Step Polish was good. And uh, I hope you understand it a little bit better. And if anything, I hope it's a tool that can work out for you if you need something to do quick polishing and, you know, don't want to spend the, you know, six hours of the two-step polishing. And again, if you have a ceramic coated vehicle, this is a great product to add gloss and make it look amazing again. And if you're, if you're wondering, to, you know, want more information about polishing a ceramic coated vehicle, we have a video on our YouTube channel here that explains that. So you can go on there and I think it's, I think the name of it is, should you polish a ceramic coated vehicle? And uh, the answer is yes. And we give you the whole explanation about that. And it's really cool because it was a car that was, that used the small bottle of our standard graphene ceramic coating. And it just had all the right things. All the scratches were in very common places, which is around the door handle and places like that. And we used the one step polish with the blue foam pad and it corrected it perfect. We reapplied the graphene ceramic coating and the guy was ready to go. So super, super awesome process. I really like how that video turned out. So make sure you go check that out and listen, subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch the videos. I think what we're just here to help and we wanna make sure that everyone has all the information they need to be the best DIY detailer they can. So thank you for watching and I will catch you guys next week.